Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Computer Science Education Week webinar, How Do You Build an App? We are really excited to have you here with us today, learning a little bit from one of the co-founders of Seesaw. But first, I'm Angela. I lead the community team here at Seesaw, which basically means I get to work with all sorts of teachers all around the world who use Seesaw, maybe even your teacher. And I was also a kindergarten teacher for many, many years, but now I work here at Seesaw. I have two of my own kiddos at home who are in third and sixth grade, probably like many of you out there. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna meet Carl, one of the co-founders of Seesaw in just a moment, but we're gonna discuss some of the schooling he had, some engineering experiences, and then we're gonna talk about some basic steps for building an app and then have time to answer your questions at the end as well. So be thinking while we're talking what you might want to ask us near the end. So hello, Carl. Hi there. Really Hi, excited everyone. to have you. Um, yeah, my name's Carl. I'm one of Seesaw's co-founders. I've got uh, two kids of my own. That's Charlie and Lily there. Um, and we are coming to you from San Francisco, California, yeah. um, which is there on the map, uh, the home of the Golden Gate Bridge. And we have an office in a office building downtown um, that looks like that from a, from a satellite. We're on the seventh floor and we've got space here for about 50 people who now work at Seesaw. Um, we have grown a lot from over the last few years from just two of us, Adrian and myself that started the company to now over 50 people who work here and have lunch in this space every day. Just like our little lunchroom. Right? Yeah, exactly. So let's talk first about how did you become an app creator, Carl? So maybe you can give us a little bit of like your school experience. What happened with that? What did you do? Yeah. Where did so, you begin? <laughs> um, well, I've been interested in computers and programming from a very early age, like when I was in kindergarten. Um, and I was always really excited about understanding how things work, and how to use technology to solve problems for people. Um, so I got involved in computers when I was really young. My parents tried to expose me to a lot of different things. And then I went on to study computer science in college. Awesome. So if you were talking a little bit about being a young, young child, yeah. um, what was your very first experience with computer programming? So uh, computers looked a lot different when <laughs> I was starting. This, yeah. this is a picture of uh, what was called a TRS-80. Uh, it was something that you plugged into your television to see what was on the screen, and you used a cassette tape to <laughs> store and load programs. You might not even know what a cassette tape is, but your teacher it was, will have to tell you later. Yeah, your teacher will tell you later. But uh, computers look pretty different, and my first experience was actually I took a class uh, in a programming language called Logo, which was all about making this turtle move around on the screen and draw things. It would seem super simplistic to all of you today, but I thought it was just amazing that I could make this thing do what I wanted it to do. Um, so the way you tell computers uh, what to do is you write code. Uh, this is an example of some code in Seesaw, and it's basically, um, basically computers are, are kind of dumb in a weird way. Like they do exactly what you tell them to do, and yep. that, and only that. Yep. And so writing code is the process of being very specific about where you want a button to go on the screen, what should happen when you click on it. Exactly. But I, what I think really initially drew me to programming and building apps was that it was a way for me to be creative. I was not, uh, you know, an amazing artist, but Computers let me take a blank sheet of paper, or a blank screen in that case, and really uh, make it do whatever I wanted it to do. And that that sort of uh, ability to make something was really um, really exciting to me, and what still excites me now. That's awesome. So we're going to go into some basic steps for building an app, and we're going to kind of talk quickly through them. There's all sorts of things, and Carl has gone through years of schooling to, to get to this point, but it'll give you an idea of some basic steps to follow. So here's kind of the, the things that we're gonna talk about, but we'll go through um, each one one at a time for the steps in building an app. So the first one is really to think of an idea. Yeah, so you know the, the beginning of any app is really trying to understand what problem are you trying to solve. It might just be, I wanna build something cool for my friends, 
uh, or it might be, you know, I've got, I observe some problem in the world that, that I want to make better that I think a computer program could help. And what were we, what were you trying to solve with Seesaw, Carl? Yeah, so, you know, uh, we heard from a lot of teachers that they were looking for ways to help collect and organize and share all the great yeah. things that people were learning uh, in the classroom, whether that was on using technology or not. And I would come home and ask my kids every day, what do you do in school? And they would tell me nothing. <laughs> and so I thought uh, those two ideas could kind of combine into a product like Seesaw. Love that. So step two, make a plan. Yeah, so the, the thing about coding is that you have to be very, very specific. And so it's easy to get a lot of things wrong. And so before you start coding, it's usually really helpful to kind of make a, sort of a looser plan for what you want your program to do. What are the screens going to look like? How do you want the flows to work? Um, and oftentimes we do that just on pen and paper. We make pictures of things, and we sort of show those to people and see what they have to say. So when we first started Seesaw, um, you know, you may be familiar with a screen that looks kind of like this. <laughs> it has a few more buttons on it now. But we just made, we made that picture in a, in a drawing program, and we showed yeah. it to some teachers. And we're like, here, here's kind of how it looked. You click yeah. on photo. You then get a camera and uh, be able to take a picture of something. And then you know, record your voice on it. And we showed that to teachers like Angela. In yeah. fact, was one of the very first teachers we showed it to. And kind of said, what do you think? And got their ideas and kind of made some changes and tweaks based on their feedback. And so, then you had to write the code. Right. So, so <laughs> the hard part is figuring out kind of what you want to build, actually. Uh, the coding part takes time. But if you have a clear sense of what you want to build, it's not that hard. So uh, you need to learn these languages to tell the computer what to do. Here's an example of that code again. Um, but And what coding language do you use here at CSAC? So we use a bunch. Um, so for every uh, platform, so like your iPhones uh, or your Android devices or your Chromebooks, all use different programming languages. So we use a language called Objective-C for building iPhone apps. We use a language called Java for building stuff that works on Android devices. And we mostly use like uh, Python and JavaScript to build uh, Seesaw that works on your phones. So now we're at step four. Test yeah. and fix. So, so the invariably, you will uh, get some things wrong. When, when you're writing code, uh, we call those bugs. Yeah. Bugs are things that are, are ways in which the computer program you wrote doesn't do what you thought it should do. <laughs> and the only way you find those things is you actually test it. You go through the steps of using the product uh, yourself. You go through it with other people. And then you go back and fix the bugs to make a change. And one of you know, there, there are kind of two phases of testing. One is, does the code you wrote work in the way you wanted it to? And you can kind of test that internally and fix those bugs in your code. But then there's a different kind of testing uh, we call beta testing, which is, was your, your plan actually the right plan? You know, your code is working the way you thought it was, but maybe the problem you thought you were solving doesn't actually solve a problem. And the only way to really test that is to get your app in front of Whoever, whoever it is that you anticipate using it, you know, for Seesaw, it's students and teachers and parents, and see if it actually solves their problems. See if it actually works the way you expected, and then get better. And can you tell us what beta means? Yeah, so beta is from the Greek alphabet. It's the letter B. And the I, why we call this a beta test is that it's like a little past the letter A. It's a little past alpha. It's mostly working. But it's still pretty early. It's not the finished product yet. Just the test. Just a Just test. test. Just, Just a way to get some feedback. So, so one of the first beta tests we did for, for Seesaw uh, was, again, with a bunch of classrooms like Angela's. And we said, hey, OK, the way you're going to log into Seesaw is you're going to type in a class code. And this was the login screen. And uh, you know, we showed that to a few teachers. And they were like, huh, well, you know, <laughs> That doesn't actually work so well for us. Getting everyone to type in a six-letter code was a lot of work for teachers. And one of our teachers, uh, a guy named Zach, was like, hey, I, instead of a code, or maybe in addition to a code, it'd be really cool if you could scan a QR code. And he sent me this picture when I was talking <laughs> to him. And he said, why don't you build this? And that's actually where the idea for signing into Seesaw from a QR code came from. It came from a teacher in this beta test period. And this um, is some more of his sketches. Some more of his sketches. You know, he said, when you're done, there should be a big green check, which 
if you uh, are paying attention when you see saw there in fact is. All right, uh, so we're at step six. Yeah, so once once you get all this great feedback, uh, you know, you kind of, in some ways, start again from the beginning, right? You might find a new bug and you need to fix the code. You might come up with a new idea or a change for an idea that you already had, and the whole process kind of starts all over again. You're so not done. You're never done. <laughs> the, the funny, amazing, interesting thing about software is that you're, you're really never done. You can always make it better. And so we're constantly, you know, what they call iterating, going over and over and over again on Seesaw to make it better, listening to more feedback and more ideas from, from folks like I yourself. love that fancy word, iterating. Yeah. That, what does that mean again, iterating? So it, it means to like turn over again. Okay. So it's like start back Do at the again. beginning and go Do through the again. same process again. So if we think for a second, how long did it take you to build something that you wanted to share with everybody? Yeah, so the, the first uh, beta test we did on CISA was after like three or four months of working with a team of about three people. And then it was about six months before we actually shared it with the world. Cool. And then we're sharing and, it with the world now. And then now. we're sharing it with the world, yeah. So, so once you've gone through this uh, period of testing uh, and iterating, and you feel like it's good enough to share to everyone, um, you know, you need to publish publish your app. Uh, for, for mobile apps, that means publishing it to an app store, like Apple's App Store or Google Play. If you've got a website, you, you know, put it up on a server where other people can access it. And, you know, as it says here, the, the iteration doesn't stop even when you launch. You'll, we're always listening to feedback and continuing to evolve. So this was what Seesaw looked like when we first launched. You can see it has a few more buttons than the last screenshot. We added video yeah. and drawing. Uh, and this was a screenshot from the, the App Store when we launched, um, you know, coming up on four years ago now. Wow. Which is it's changed a lot. to me. It's changed a lot. So we're going to answer some questions now, awesome. which I'm really excited about. One of them came in before we started the webinar. So we're going to start with that, and then we're going to give you a chance to ask questions as well. So Ms. Leach class asked, how often did you fail and need to find a solution? So, um, you know, in many ways, I think we fail at some little thing every day. We are constantly um, trying out an idea and, and seeing what goes wrong. One of the, the you know, bigger quote unquote failures though was when we first started working in this area, we built a, a product called Shadow Puppet, which some of you may use. I still like that product, but as a, as a business, it wasn't really working that well and it was, really through building that product and getting close to a bunch of classrooms and teachers and hearing about their problems that the ideas for Seesaw emerged. So on the one hand, I feel like Shadow Puppet was kind of a failure. And on the other hand, I think it was, you know, the sort of secret to the success of Seesaw. So oftentimes what feels like a failure in the moment uh, isn't really, it's just a step on the way to success. And just keep trying, right? Keep I trying. love that. I love that. So we're going to answer some questions live. So here's how this is going to work. Um, your teacher is going to be able to type in questions. And we ask that when you type in a question, you include your grade level and your location so that when we read it, you know we're, you know, we're talking to you. But we're going to play a little bit of music here for about 30 seconds to give you time as a class to chat and share your ideas about what you'd like to ask with your teacher so they can share it with us. So here we go. We're looking at all the questions coming I know, in. There this, is, so this is exciting. My favorite part of, <laughs> of this talk. Keep them coming. Well, there's so many. Now, we're not yeah. going to have time to answer all of them, but boy, we'd love to. So we're going to start with Ms. Albert's class is asking, how did you get the name Seesaw? Yeah, that's a great question. So when we, before we launched, we needed to come up with a name for this thing. 
And we wanted something that um, sort of felt like it belonged in a school or belonged uh, as something to use with kids, but wasn't too literal. That wasn't just like, you know, photo journal or class <laughs> journal or something like that. Um, and so we were, we were trying to come up with some names that were a little bit playful. And we brainstormed a bunch of things that were related to school. Uh, and, you know, we had things like spiral from like a spiral notebook. Yeah. Uh, and one of them was was Seesaw. And we chose Seesaw because it felt kind of fun, but also had this idea of being kind of visual, which is really important to us when we were working on Seesaw, and this kind of back and forth between students and teachers and, and parents. Love it, like a Seesaw. Up like and a down, Seesaw, back and forth. up and down, I know, back right? and forth. Okay, so Miss Gant's class is in Burnsville, Minnesota. Hello, Minnesota friends. Um, <laughs> what are, are you currently working on a new app or version of Seesaw? Yeah, so we are always yes, working are. on improvements to CESA. Um, you know, of the, the 50 people that work at CESA, about half of those work on our product and engineering team. And they are always listening to feedback from teachers and students and parents and trying to make what we've built already better or to like listen for ways in which CESA can solve new problems for, for classrooms. And um, you know, we're, we're actually towards the end of the year here uh, in our sort of process of planning what we're going to build for next back to school and have a lot of exciting so things stay tuned. up. Stay, stay tuned. tuned. Okay, Mr. Rondot's class is a fourth grade class in Michigan, and they want to know how old were you when you started coding and how many apps have you made? Uh, yeah, so I started when I was really young. Uh, my parents wanted to expose me to a bunch of different things. I did gymnastics class and violin lessons, and I did computer programming classes when I was like around five years old. Um, and computers is kind of what stuck. I've, I've then, you know, gone on to study computer science in college and, and work in the technology industry. So I've uh, had a chance to work on some apps of my own that I made in my own companies, um, but also, uh, you know, if you use Google Calendar, that's a product I worked on as well. Cool. We have so many great questions here. It's like, where do we go next? Um, oh, this is a great question uh, from Miss Bear Other's class. I hope I'm saying your name right. Fourth grade in Estes Park, Colorado. What is your favorite part of Seesaw? What are you most proud of? Yeah, so I think um, one of the things that uh, you know, really makes my sort of face light up when I'm coming to work is hearing about the ways that CESA has been able to help students express themselves yep. uh, and really share what they're, you know, learning with their, their peers or their parents or their teacher. That idea that uh, we can really help students get excited about learning and show what they know is really at the core of CESA. Love it. Okay, Mr. Schmidt and Ms. Del Nair, uh, Negro's fifth grade classes in Albany, New York. They want to know how long does it take to create an app from start to finish? Well, so the answer is sort of that it depends on how <laughs> yeah. complicated the app is. You can build a simple app in a day. Um, you know, the first version of Seesaw, which was a lot simpler than it is now, took us about three months to build, like three people for three months. Sometimes it might take a year if you're building a more complicated app. Okay, Miss uh, Ms. Murphy's third and fourth grade class in Michigan want to know how many students are using Seesaw? That's a great question. Um, so we have uh, teachers and students using Seesaw at over half the schools in the United States and in over 150 countries around the world. So it's millions of kids that interact with Seesaw and that's, you know, that's pretty awesome. That's why we yeah. all come to work every day to make CISA better for, for all of you. We only have, this is probably our last question, and then we have okay. something else that we're going to share with them here. So Ms. Setzer's class in Charleston, South Carolina, they're fifth graders. How old do you have to be to work at CISA? That is a great question. You know, honestly, uh, we don't really care how old you are <laughs> as long as you can you know, do the work and do the job. That probably means you've gone to college, yeah. but you know we we'd make exceptions for someone who could come in and do the work we need done. Wow, that's awesome! So the other thing I want to let you know about is you get a chance to do some creating if your teacher would like you to participate. So we have an activity in Seesaw's activity library, and you can also find it on the web page listed on this slide, but basically it is a little bit of a contest because we are looking to design the next Seesaw class icon. So in this picture here, you can kind of see 
what choices there currently are for class icons, and we are looking for three new designs, and we want them to come from you. So your teacher can share this activity with you, and you can use the drawing tools within Seesaw to create a new class icon. And what we're going to do is if your teacher shares that with us um, by Friday, you'll kind of be in our submissions because we're going to look through those and choose three designs that will inspire our Seesaw designer to turn that into a Seesaw class icon. So you might actually see a version of your design that inspired our designer and actually show up in Seesaw. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting. You can find this again in the activity library. Your teacher can find it and share it with you. So that's really exciting. But we want to thank you for joining us here today. We're Super excited to see what you learn and do all throughout this week, Computer Science Education Week. Make sure you share with us um, at Seesaw Coders if, you're, if your teacher wants to share with us. But thanks so much for joining us today, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for making Seesaw part of your class.